inference here and lead to the inference there. It's like a, a water uh, wearing away stones. These trench, both Western and Chinese use this uh, phrase. <coughs> Uh, so, facial tone, I come back to facial tone again, and myself, we, are, we both Chinese, the Chinese, the Western, but, but uh, 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 we are different generations. Um, we both interested in, uh, to see Chinese society as a whole uh, through the pre, uh, prism of the local and the individual. So, um, so, what we see, Chinese culture, Meets the West, uh, we, we meet the West with the uh, equally burn of the thousands of years in which it has been recognizably the protector of a single continuous civilization. Its uh, territory uh, stretches over 10,000 million square kilometers, within which uh, disparate provinces, townships, towns, villagers, and individuals identify themselves as Chinese. Uh, we also see chi in China, changing in China has been organic. Uh, so Guanxi or Li Xiangwang Lai's book demonstrates the uh, mechanism of how Chinese people continue, continuously create their own culture and society. What might the Chinese ways of doing things have to offer to the West? Uh, because we are come from China in comparative perspective for network, so we start to move on using China's comparative to compare with the rest of the country and world, uh, and uh, the different regions as well. <coughs> so uh, there would be a little uh, less emphasizes on fairness as uh, um, consisting of a common set of rules for everybody. And a little bit more understanding of fairness as being responsive, uh, response, uh, responsiveness uh, to individuals and uh, individuals' uh, solutions. There is an English saying uh, hard case, cases made a bad law, meaning that law cannot always be fair and that for the general good. This can't be helped. I think it is generally assumed that one law for all is only uh, the only way to rule a large business or large country. But here, the largest nation in the world proceeding on an entirely different assumption. Uh, I would like to hope that the counterbalancing uh, inference in, in favor of the individuals is an essential part that what China will offer. Um, so what we'll see uh, seems uh, paradox, uh, paradoxical to many Westerners. Uh, we see a very keen, even stricter observance of what an investigation turns out to be an entirely flexible, adaptive, uh, adaptive system of behavior. And what have the single party um, apparently uh, moralistic uh, uh, authority to the uh, I mean the, uh, the Chinese Communist Party it is quite ready to give authority to a villagery enterprise who, who even are not member of the party and also in one of the world the, the most notable self-transformation notion nations we have the persistence of uh, indigenous ritual wherever the physically different styles of towns, counties, life per, uh, permit them. 
Uh, so finally, I hope my talk helps you to laugh and uh, as well as understand China and Chinese society. This is a little bit of boasting. So 30 years ago, Guan Xi was a useful but untranslatable term used to pro uh, promote understanding of Chinese and Chinese society. And 30 years later, you might find that uh, equally, even more, uh, I mean, equally untranslatable Chinese words, the term Li Shang Wang Lai uh, is a uh, more useful key, key to uh, better understanding of China and uh, how to deal with Chinese people. Uh, so, a uh, final warning is maybe what seems so very Chinese can be found everywhere, but uh, dressed up uh, a little differently. Thank you. So, this is time for questions. If uh, anyone would like to ask, ask some questions, you may do so now. Oh, well, I'll start off first. <laughs> Uh, yeah, um, it seems it seems all very nice to have like Guan Xi and well, Li Xiangwang like being nice to everyone, like to to someone which has been nice to you. But wouldn't that give rise to like corruptions? Like let's as you said in in the uh, like in, uh, in in examples in that little village where people when they see the doctor they have to actually some sort of bribe the doctor uh, as in to give them extra money to in return for better treatments. So wouldn't that be a very inefficient model? And what do you think about that? So basically, um, it say there are some different ways interact different uh, each other coexistence. So if you only see this way, this is a, a bribe. Yes, there are some things. Uh, the way bribery in the West, it is much more wider used. Children, if you want to do something, you can bribe him to so do something. But in China, bribery, the word itself is much more serious. So, when we're talking about the negative, for example, we say doctor and nurse give you some uh, some money, like a bribery in the Western context. But in Chinese, it would be instrumental to say, hey, please take extra care of my son, like that. But uh, if the money is beyond, uh, so say, um, they gave one, well, one example between what is the difference between uh, instrumental and negative. So bribery is all down to uh, negative for uh, reciprocity that category. For example, you want to get uh, uh, get your own way by bribe someone, and then they using the public <coughs> resources. So you get. A uh, lot of you know the uh, corrupt uh, corrupt officials. There are so many examples about this. Uh, how they using public resources to get personal gain and uh, beyond certain level because there are some there are red lines to say if you get uh, how many uh, fifty thousand yuan is is a one line and one yeah fifty thousand yuan is one line. And the twenty thousand yuan is another line. So in nineteen fifty is Zhao Qingzhen, uh, like big tigers, has been killed as a model of uh, corrupt cutter officials. So that is only a few thousand yuan you can be get killed. But now the standard is much higher. So, but the very basic one is fifty thousand yuan. So if you got uh, someone give you money more than that one, it's called corruption and go down to negative. But it's below that one, it's more different. Oh. <laughs> um, any more questions? Over here? Um, yeah. Sorry, like, if some children's parents, they can buy gifts to the teacher, so then they can ask the teacher to take more care of their child. But some parents just can't afford it. So what's your view on this? Um, it is a quite common practice in China. Uh, give, um, parents give gifts to teacher, and then there's difference between teacher to teachers. Some teacher would refuse to say, "If I received your your gifts, that means you bo 